Hey team, today we're going to talk about Tailwind CSS. We're going to go over what it is and how you can get started. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe for future updates. Tailwind is a utility-first CSS framework. It allows you to design your page with just some low-level CSS classes. To show you how Tailwind works, we're going to dive in right into the code. So I'm starting off with a static HTML page that I filled in with Fillerama.io. Fillerama is just a neat little filler placeholder text service that allows you to get content from your favorite TV show. So in my code, it's just a simple HTML file with all that content already placed for our demo, we're going to use the CDN, where it's not necessarily recommended because it doesn't come with all the different features Tailwind has, but just for these purposes to walk you through it, just to get started, we're going to start there. So after I add this CDN link into my file, I can open back up. And then you can see that all the styles are actually gone. So what Tailwind's doing is actually stripping all the styles to make it more consistent through the different browsers. That way, when you go to apply your styles, it's going to be more consistent. So to get those styles back, we're going to apply it to our HTML elements. So to start, I'm going to select all of my paragraph tags. And I'm going to put the class of MY5, which refers to margin on the Y axis at a level of five. And if we look in our browser, we can see that our paragraphs now have that margin applied to it with that class name. All these utility classes are gonna work similarly, where you have the property that it's gonna be applied to and the value indicator. Next, I wanna start with my header tags. So starting with the H1, I'm gonna add a class there. I'm gonna add the font bold, which sets the font to bold. We're gonna have a MT, which is margin top of eight and MB, which is margin bottom of five. And if we look in the browser, we can see that applied to our header. Now I'm gonna apply that same thing to all the rest of my headers. So I don't have many, I have an H2 and I have an H3. And refreshing the page, they all look the same. So the header should be a little bit different in size, right? So we can do that as well. Starting at the top, we're gonna to do the H1 of text 2XL. We can set the H2 as text XL and then our H3 as text large. And again, if we refresh our page, we can start to see that our headers look a little bit more like headers. Now you also might notice that our lists don't actually look like lists, so how can we fix that? Finding our OL here, our ordered list, I'm gonna add a class with the value of list decimal, list inside, MY5, which is margin y-axis, and PL2, which is padding left. And refreshing our browser, we now see our list with our different numbers. Now we also wanna do the same thing to our unordered list. So I'm gonna copy that same value and go down to our UL, add a class. But instead of a decimal, we wanna make that disk because it's a different unordered list. And similarly, now we have a list, but we have it with our disks instead of our numbers. Now finally, I like my content to kind of be narrowed down and then centered in the browser. So on my body, I'm also gonna put a max width of 4XL and an M axis, which is the margin of auto. That way it narrows it and it's gonna float in the middle of the page. And if we look back on our browser, we can see that it's applied to the body. Now, just for completeness sake, I wouldn't actually normally add these kind of things to the body. We'd probably wanna put like a main tag, but just for demo purposes, let's keep going with that. Finally, you might be asking, how do we make a button element? So let's make a button element, party with swarm. And then we're gonna add a class with a whole bunch of them. Now, what we're gonna do here is have the text with the color of white. We're gonna have our font bold. We're gonna set a background with the color of purple and a strength of 700. On hover, we're gonna make that background color to purple with a strength of 800. And then additionally, we're gonna set the padding on the Y axis to two, the padding on the X axis to four, and round the corners with the rounded class. Once we refresh the page, we can see our new button. They might be thinking that's a lot to have to keep copying and pasting throughout all my different elements. So how can I make that a little bit easier? So for that, we're gonna actually spin up a React app. That's gonna make it a little easier to transform our different styles into one cohesive class. So I already started this Create React app and it looks pretty much the same as what we were just seeing in our static app. In the code, I migrated over all the content. I also changed the class equals to class name equals since it's now a React app. If you want a more in-depth look at how to set up Tailwind with your React app, definitely check the tutorial that I wrote out in the link. But for our purposes, we're gonna add the auto prefixer package, the post CSS CLI, as well as Tailwind itself. That's gonna allow us to have both our build and our watch commands. Additionally, I added Concurrently and Chokadar. That way we can have a little bit better of a watch experience when we're working on our app. Since we're using PostCSS, I added a config, which we're going to require the plugins for Tailwind CSS and Auto Prefixer. We're using Auto Prefixer because Tailwind by default doesn't come with the different browser prefixes in the event that it's not supported. So that's going to help go through and apply that to all of our styles. And finally, in our app.css file, I cleared out all the default Create React App styles, and I'm importing our different utilities from Tailwind. So before we jumped over to this React app, the 
thing that we said is probably the biggest pain point with this is that we have to repeat all these styles in the classes. So for the button, for instance, I don't really want to necessarily have to repeat all those different classes every time I want a button. So instead what we can do is we can use Tailwind's apply directive, which is basically going to take those same styles of each of those classes and apply them to a new class for us. So in our instance, I created a new class called button with BTN, and I'm going to apply the font bold, the padding, and the rounded corners. And so we can have some customization of our different buttons. Since it doesn't naturally come with a purple background, for instance, we're going to say button purple as a new class. That way I'm going to apply my purple background with the white text, as well as on hover, I'm going to apply that darker shade of purple. And in my HTML, I can take away all these different class names and simply replace it with button and button purple. And if we look back in our browser, it looks exactly the same, which is what we want, except now we're using those button classes and those button classes have the styles that we want. You can apply the same concept to all the different components, whether you want to make a solid class for your headers or for each of our list elements so that we don't have to repeat lists inside and the different margin and padding each time. But it's really up to you to take those concepts and apply them to however you would like. So now if you followed along with me, you should have a pretty basic understanding of Tailwind CSS and how to apply it to your code. There's a ton of different ways to apply CSS to your code and Tailwind's a great way to get started. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.